Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy and this is a big pile of expensive boxes that have been laying around the garage for way too long. And today, we're finally gonna open them up. Stick with us, I'll show you what we're gonna get into. Any guesses on what's in these things? This is box number one. I've tried to run over it with the forklift several times and it's pretty darn heavy. So I'm guessing we'll start with this one. Everything's individually wrapped. It doesn't appear I smashed anything, at least right at this moment. Looks to be intact. I don't see any papers in there. So let's go on to box number two. Got a box of boxes. Hardware. Stepper motors. Electronics. Miscellaneous, that's heavy. Z-axis. Some stuff wrapped in plasti wrap. And these guys. And we got another box and some big metal pieces. One thing's for sure, they package this really nice. So the instructions are found online uh, to get the most up-to-date instructions. Kind of wish it came with a printed pamphlet, but that's okay. So we went online to the website, downloaded the whole pamphlet. That way we have it later for future reference. Uh, really nice thing is every piece comes in its own protective heavy duty plastic. So there's no real damage to the components. Right now what we're doing is we're installing the leveling feet in the bottoms and the bottom of the legs. This little guy, just a friction fit, uh, but it meets up with the bottom of the tube. Once it's in there, it's not coming out. Comes with these solid feet, basically just a cup that you lock with a bolt and a nut. We're just gonna thread these in here and uh, set them all to inch and a half. A lot of people like to put casters on these. Uh, since we have the forklift, uh, I don't know. We might just leave it solid with these. I'm setting them all to inch and a half. Step one complete. We obviously have a whole bunch more steps here and we're just gonna kind of time lapse this and hit the highlights if we see anything that needs a little extra attention. Uh, I think more or less straightforward construction. We got to get the frame assembled. Fiddling around a lot, we got the main structure of this framework assembled. We got the cross tubes and then the front to back rails here, probably the wrong nomenclature. But what's nice about these is they use these aluminum spacers. And you can kind of tell by the way the holes are if you have assembled it correctly. Uh, I had this flipped over on the wrong side and you could tell real easily because you couldn't get your spacers in there the correct way. They only go in one way. Bushing, so this bushing will keep you from smashing this tube, and this bushing will come from this side, keep you from smashing this tube. So you're bushed both ways. Now I'm switching this bolt around, and it's probably backwards from the instructions. I'm choosing to leave the nut on the outside so I can see it and see if anything's getting loose. You'll see the nut before the head of the bolt. Here's an image of what we're doing. We got it pulled up on the screen here. This is the main bearing carriage, and it tells you exactly which bag. This one, the writing wore off a little bit. No big deal, we knew what it was. But then like even the washers come in their own bag, same the steel, and then the nuts come in their own bag. So it's just a matter of finding the right bag, pulling out your hardware, getting our bolts into our assembly. Starting to get excited.
One major upgrade, if you noticed, I added the limit switches provided by Langmuir. And what that does for you, you don't need those, but what that does for you is you home the machine every time you start, and the x-axis is going to come over here, it's going to trip that sensor, and the y-axis is going to come up here, and it's going to trip that sensor. Uh, I thought I screwed that up completely. Major problem that I had, I had the x-axis plugged into the y-axis and it was just pile driving into the ends. And the cool part about that is it sets soft limits. So once you get it set up, it will go to the back corner all the way over. It will call that machine zero, zero. And then you set soft limits so it only goes so far forward. You can see up here we're just missing, we're just missing the plate. And then over here, on the x-axis, we're just, we're just missing this bolt. So it automatically, program-wise, limits it in the position of the machine so you're not crashing. One major screw up and ironically it was only on this corner but you can't get the bolts out on this side. We put this inner stanchion plate on with the holes on the bottom and they are supposed to be up here to reach in and tighten this bearing block. Now, luckily we were able to remove this bolt and get our small ratchet wrench in there and tighten this guy up from this end. Uh, but we screwed up and put the bolts down there and we couldn't flip this plate because this bolt here was trapped by the pan and we didn't want to take the pan out uh, to disjoin it and mess it up. So we just left it like this. If we really wanted we could have punched two more holes in here uh, but since we were able to get it through here and tighten it from this end with our little ratchet wrench uh, we were good to go. Our Hynade machine comes with an arc voltage plug we have our negative and our ground connect back to our torch height controller and then we have our trigger wire that also came so we didn't have to open up the high need plasma cutter uh, we have all the fittings here we just had to wire into these connectors uh, pretty happy with this pan so far a lot of people have leaks uh, this has been together for a couple days and there's no visible water leaks on the floor uh, the way we accomplished this was we assembled these two halves on the machine. That way it was clamped together as it was going to sit. We scotch brided with a die grinder both halves, cleaned it with acetone, put on our silicone that they provided, and then put in all the bolts just finger tight, and then came back with a clutch drill on a very, very low setting, I think like one or two on the Milwaukee and started on the very outer ends and then worked our way across a very light torque, let it cure for a day before we put water in it. So far, if it doesn't leak, I'd be super happy because I don't really want a leaky table. One other thing we purchased just for this machine was a $10 wireless Bluetooth keyboard that we just connect to our laptop and that will allow us to move them, jog the machine uh, while we're standing here. So you can just push the button. That's the x-axis is chunking away. Y-axis. I and mean, you can just jog it into your part. You can also do the Y and other various commands. So the major problem that we had on this build, uh, as I already mentioned, was the stanchion plate on the one side. We had the plate flipped upside down. Caused us a little bit, of, little bit of grief, but we were able to get around it. Don't do that. And then the other thing that really made me scratch my head for a while was we plugged in the limit switches backwards uh, because we thought the one in the back would take the longer cable and we just plugged it in without paying attention to the letter. Let's fire this thing up.
Let her rip. Not bad for a first test.